The MSI Prestige 15 is a thin and light laptop that uses Intel's newest 10th gen CPUs. So let's find out just how hot this gets, see what the limitations are, and see what can be done to improve performance. For the specs, it's got the Intel i7-107-10U CPU, which is the first time we've had a U-series chip with 6 cores and 12 threads. For the graphics, there's an NVIDIA 1650 Max-Q, and it's got 16GB of memory and dual channel. You can find other configurations and updated prices linked in the description. Air is pulled in underneath the machine through the holes towards the back. It then gets exhausted through the vents below the screen. Inside, there are a couple of fans, and a single heat pipe is shared between processor and graphics. The laptop comes with MSI's Creator Center software installed, which is basically the control panel to manage it. We can use this to swap between three performance modes, which from lowest to highest are Eco, Comfort, and Sport. We've also got the option of leaving fans on auto speed or enabling cooler boost for max speed, and I've tested all of these options. Thermal testing was completed in an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, so expect different results in different environments. At idle, both the CPU and GPU were looking fine. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU workloads, and are meant to represent worst case scenarios as I ran them for extended periods of time. The gaming results towards the upper half of the graph were tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results shown on the lower half of the graph are from running the A64 CPU stress test with only the stress CPU option checked, and the Heaven GPU benchmark at max settings at the same time to fully load the system. Whether gaming or under combined CPU and GPU stress test, thermals were the lowest with eco mode enabled, as this caps the power limits and performance. While actually playing this game in eco mode, it wasn't very playable due to the limits. We'll see some FPS benchmarks soon. This is why temperatures rise when we step up to comfort mode, and then again to the highest performance mode, sport mode. By simply setting the fan to max speed from automatic, the CPU temperature lowers by 10 degrees, a nice improvement. Applying an undervolt to the CPU didn't change thermals in the stress test, but it did help slightly with this particular game. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. Eco mode had the lowest performance due to the power limit caps in place. Again, comfort mode stepped up the performance, then sport mode offered the best experience. Although we saw the CPU temperature drop by 10 degrees in the last graph with the fan at maximum, there wasn't actually any clock speed difference as there was no thermal throttling taking place. The limitation was power. This is why undervolting helped improve clock speed. However, it still wasn't possible to reach the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7 chip in either of these workloads. These are the average TDP values during these same tests. In most cases, the GPU was hitting its 35W limit, and the CPU seemed to be doing well considering this is a 15W chip. However, the laptop manufacturer does have the option of configuring a 25W TDP, which seems to be the case here based on these results. Hardware Info reported total system power draw with the stress tests running at 86 watts, and using an external power meter showed the laptop was consuming 88.7 watts. The Prestige 15 comes with a 90 watt power brick, so under these worst case combined CPU and GPU loads, it seems that we're hitting the limits of the power brick. And this is why the 3.9GHz all-core turbo boost wasn't being hit. Both thermal and power limits were fine, but the power brick just couldn't give it any more. Here are the CPU clock speeds while under a CPU-only stress test. The results are higher as the NVIDIA graphics are now idle, so there's more power available and less heat. Sport mode allowed us to hit the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo boost speed with this workload. We can see that the temperature dropped back 11 degrees by undervolting the CPU, despite no difference in actual performance in this workload. When in a CPU-only workload like this, the average TDP was actually sitting on 36 watts sustained. Quite impressive for a U-series chip and well above the 15 watt base spec. To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks from these different modes. The results were quite surprising. In sport mode, the multi-core score is actually in line with the i7-9750H, due to that higher power limit that's possible in CPU-only workloads. Due to these results, I'll compare this 10th gen chip with the 9750H in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. So how do these different changes actually affect game performance? I've tested a couple of games to find out. 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark at highest settings. As this test tends to be more GPU bound, especially at max settings, undervolting the CPU changed nothing. Comfort mode performed a little behind, with a larger difference seen in Eco mode. Far Cry 5 was tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings. There wasn't much difference between comfort and sport, a little boost to 1% low mostly, then a bit extra 1% low once undervolted. Eco mode meanwhile was significantly lower. If you want to see more gaming benchmarks on this machine, check the card in the top right where I've tested 18 games at all setting levels. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle it was quite cool, around the typical 30 degrees I usually see. With the stress tests in eco mode, it's a bit warm in the center, around mid 40s towards the back. In comfort mode, it's now a bit warmer. Despite the fan speed increasing, the internals are now hotter. Here's the highest option, sport mode, which gets to the 50s in the center, and mid 50s up the back which was hot to the touch. Granted, you won't be touching there. When playing an actual game, it was similar. The WASD keys and wrist rest was fine, but the middle was quite warm. By setting the fans to max speed, the temperatures drop a fair bit. Here's what the fans sound like during these different tests. At idle in eco mode, it was completely silent, no fan noise or coil whine at all. With the stress tests going in eco mode, it was still fairly quiet. Playing games in this mode was hit or miss. Some worked okay while others were unplayable. Comfort mode only rose fan speed a bit. And then they rose further in sport mode. In sport mode, the fan speed did gradually change between 44 and 47 decibels, despite the same consistent workload. With the fan at max speed, it was quite loud. Or at least it sounded higher pitched than usual. Overall, I thought the performance was fair considering it's clearly designed as a thinner and lighter machine, which is exactly what the Intel U series CPUs are for. With that said though, the power limit of my i7-10710U did seem quite high, and despite this, the thermals didn't get too bad. Thermal throttling was almost hit in sport mode, but as shown we could improve this substantially by boosting fan speed. Undervolting the CPU did allow us to claw back some more performance. However, the 90 watt power brick seems to be the limiting factor here. It does charge with USB Type-C, so in theory you could probably use a different power source. While under CPU only workloads, where there was adequate power, the results were impressive and not what I was expecting. You'll definitely want to keep an eye out for my upcoming comparison between the i7-9750H and i7-10710U. <laughs> That's a great name. Despite this being a 10th gen chip, I wasn't expecting amazing thermals. As this is a Comet Lake chip, it's still based on Intel's classic 14 nanometer architecture. It's not 10 nanometer like Ice Lake, but for some reason, both are classified as 10th gen, which is fun. Anyway, despite 6 cores now being available in the U series, at least in the Prestige 15, it doesn't seem to get too hot. This will, of course, vary between machines though. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise, the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Raising fan speed and undervolting are much easier for most people to do than changing paste anyway. And as we've seen, these tweaks did help improve performance and temperatures with the Prestige 15. Let me know what you thought about the thermals from the MSI Prestige 15 laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, you'll definitely want to get subscribed for the upcoming full review to see everything this machine has to offer.